Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example of how we deal with torque. And in this particular case, we have a diving board. It's a kind of a classical example. We have a diver at the end of the board, of course, putting weight on that board. We have the board, which has a mass in itself, supported here and here. And so you can see that there's going to be some torquing action here. And the question now on the problem here is find the force exerted on the two supports of the diving board. So those forces will probably be in the vertical direction. And the question is, what is the force on support one and the force on support two? So how do we do that? Well, we use the equation that the sum of all the torques, they are going to add up to zero. And in this case, we need to find a pivot point. So we can either pick the pivot point here or pi pick the pivot point there. I'm going to start by picking this as my first pivot point. And so we'll call it torque around point, point number two. If I add them all up, I'll get a zero. So let's determine what all the torques are. So we have one force right here, the weight of the diver, which is downward like this, mg, and then the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation or the pivot point to where the, where the line of action of the force is. This distance right here, let's call this distance one. All right. Second force, well, that's the mass of the board acting uh, by gravity pushing down and let's find the center mass which is at the halfway point. If this is a five meter long board then the halfway point is two and a half meters from the end and so the weight of the board acts as if all of the mass is at the center mass. So that's mg right there and the distance from the line of action force to the pivot point right here is this distance right here. Let's call that d2. There, barely fit it in there. There it is. Now the third force would be, hmm, let's see, well, there's some action right here and you can imagine if these were the only forces acting on the board, the board would simply tip this way, this would go up, so you can see that the support right here is keeping the board from tipping up, so that there's some force pushing down on the board like that, let's call that force at point number one, and um, hmm, what's the distance from the pivot point to that force, well here's the line of action of the force, we want to find the perpendicular distance, which is this distance right here, and let's call that d sub 3. Okay, now we're ready to write our equation. Let's add up all the sums of all the torques, and when we do that, we get 0. 0 equals the first torque. Now, mg, if that was the only force acting on the board, will cause the board to tip in a clockwise direction. I'm going to call clockwise the positive torque direction, and counterclockwise the negative torque direction. That will be a plus mg times the distance, which is d1. We have the second force, which is big mg, which is also in the positive direction, or clockwise direction in this case. So we multiply the weight of the board times the distance, which is d2. And again, I like to write d1, d2, d3 before I actually figure out what they are. And then for the third one, I can see where the force, if that was the only force acting on this board, would cause the board to tip in a counterclockwise direction. So that's a negative torque, negative f1, times the distance to the pivot point, which is distance 3. And now we can go ahead and determine what distance 1, distance 2, and distance 3 is. If we imagine that this is the length of the board, or since we already have our given dimensions, we can actually probably figure it out. Uh, distance 1 looks like it's uh, 3 meters, right? So we have uh, 0 equals mg times 3 meters for distance 1 plus big mg times distance two here would be, let's see, if this is three meters and we're, and this is two and a half meters from this end to this end or from this end to this end, this point right here, then we know the distance here, the difference is a half a meter minus the force, force one, and that's what we're looking for, right? This is the question. What's that force equal to? And the distance three would be from the end of the board here to the pivot point, and that would be a distance of two meters. All right, now, since we're looking for F1, we're going to bring that term over here. So we have F1, that becomes positive now, times the two meters is equal to mg times three meters plus big mg times a half a meter. And uh, now we can divide both sides of the equation by two meters, so this then disappears, and then here we have divided by two meters on this side. And so finally, I'm now ready to plug in the value so we can figure out what F1 is equal to. So F1 is equal to small m times g. The small m is 40 kilograms. So 
So we have 40 kilograms times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times 3 meters, plus the big M, which is the mass of the board, which is 60 kilograms, times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the distance to the pivot point, which was a half a meter, and then take the whole thing and divide it by 2 meters. Now notice that the units meters will cancel out, and we're left with kilograms meters per second squared, which is the units of force, that's newtons. And let's find the calculator so we can figure out what this is equal to. So we have 40 times 9.8 times 3, we add to that 60 times 9.8 times 0.5, and then we divide that by 2, and we get 734. So F1 is equal to 735 newtons. All right. Okay, now we need to find the force on this pivot point right here. So. The way we can do that is as follows. We can say, well, let's move this pivot point over to here and then do the whole problem over again, just like we did, but now with the pivot point over here, and then we can find the force there. That's one way to do it. Or you can say at this point that the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. The weight of the board plus the weight of the person plus the force pushing down here must equal the force pushing up over here. So. That seems to be the easiest way to do that, so I'm going to then use that method. So the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. So let's add up all the forces. We have F1 in a negative direction, and we know what F1 is right here, so that's minus F1. We have the mg acting in a negative direction, so that's minus big mg. We have the small mg acting, acting in a negative direction, that's a minus little mg. And then the only force that's acting in a positive direction, and let me just illustrate where that is, that would be this force right here. Oop, and that pen doesn't work. So let's get rid of that pen. And let's see if my blue pen works. Yes, it does. So this would be here F2, uh, because that's a pivot point number two. And that is acting in an upward direction. So it would be plus F2. All right. Now, since we're looking for F2, we can move all these terms that are negative to the other side to make them positive and then switch the equation around. That means that we have F2 will now be equal to the total sum of F1 plus big MG plus little mg. So what I did was I moved these three terms over, over here and then just flipped the equation around. Plugging in the values for, for these three terms are 735 newtons plus big M times G, big M is 60 kilograms, times G of 9.8 meters per second squared, plus little m, which is 40 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's it. Adding that all together should give me the answer. So plus 60 times 9.8 plus 40 times 9.8, and I get a total of 1,715 newtons, and that would be the force on the second pivot point, and that force, of course, would be acting upward. And that's how you do a torque problem like that.